In this problem, you have to plan your journey with train across different days of the year. And you have to plan in such a way that uh, you incur the minimum cost. And it has been asked a few times in Facebook, Amazon and Google interviews. So first, let's understand the problem. So you will be given a day number, a list of days. And these days will be from 1 to 365. So it is a non-leap year and each day is between 1 to 365 and you are planning within one year. And uh, this list is strictly increasing. This is given. So no two days will be repeated. That is you will just make one journey on a given day. And uh, and uh, uh, this so the maximum size can be 365 since each this list is uh, strictly increasing and it can take a value from 1 to 365. So this list will also be of maximum 365 size. And then we have three types of passes that are available to us. Passes or tickets, whatever you like to call. So this is a daily pass, which is valid for one day. This costs two units. Next is weekly pass. This is daily, this is weekly and this is monthly. That is valid for 30 days. So uh, each month will be of 30 days and not like 31 or 30. This pass is valid for 30 days, this pass is valid for 7 days and its cost is 7 and this is valid for 30 days. So uh, you should uh, plan your journey such a way that if you have multiple days which are in close proximity to each other, then you will think that maybe I should take a monthly pass. But if you see that one journey you make in uh, January, next you make in February or they are very wide, there are not too many clusters then you would prefer smaller denominations. So uh, for example, let's see this problem. Let's say you have to travel on these dates. What should be your strategy? So here you have to return just the cost, minimum cost and not the actual strategy. So let's see. So uh, a bare minimum uh, upper bound you can get is to take a daily pass on each of these. So if you have let's say here two, four, six, so six days of travel then straight away multiply that by 2. So you see that at least you have a upper bound of 12. That is, can we find a better solution? So if you take daily pass for each of these, it will cost 12. But can we group some of them together? So let's see. So for daily pass, the cost is 2 per day. For weekly pass, it's 7 days, 7 units. Let's say $7. So it's $1 per day and for 30 days it's 15 so it's $0.5 per, per day. But let's say you take monthly pass and you travel just 3 days then it's not beneficial or if you travel just 5 days then it's not beneficial. So uh, let's say how we can solve this. So in this case it will be not 12 but 11 and how is that? So let's say you take a weekly pass on day 1 so that is valid for 7 days starting from that day itself. So you can travel till here using weekly pass that is 7 days and this is not within a week so you cannot travel within same week so you will take a daily pass to 2 so total will be 11. So how we can formally solve this? So in this case let's say we have 1, 4, 6, 7, 8, 20. So uh, we will try to build the solution bottom up. So I am hinting towards dynamic programming and uh, I am a big fan of uh, bottom up ap approach. So you will see in most of my dynamic programming solutions, I prefer the bottom up approach and here also I will do the same. So uh, how we can build the solution? Let's say you are just given one day. Then what will be the optimum? You would say that we will take a daily ticket. And uh, that's perfectly valid in most practical scenarios. But uh, let's say in some hypothetical scenario, this monthly pass costs less than weekly pass. So a, a safe bet would be that take the minimum of these three tickets. So whichever is the minimum, the solution for just this one would be that one. In this case, two. Now let's build the solution. So we have we know the solution from here onwards. So from here onwards it was zero, there is no travel required, so no ticket needs to be purchased. From here onwards we need to purchase, the minimum possible value is two, minimum of these three. Now let's keep increasing the solution, we have to reach here. So now from here onwards what will be the minimum? 
so you are here and you have solved some values on the right and we have the optimal solution for here onwards in this direction here onwards we know the actual uh, optimal solution we are solving for this one so what we will do either we will purchase a daily ticket so this will be part of a daily travel one day travel or it will be a part of weekly travel we can club it with some days on the right and then take a weekly ticket and use the optimal solution here onwards or club it in a monthly ticket so on for this day we have to pick one of these we have to take one of the tickets let's say we pick a daily ticket so what will be the optimal one of the solution for this we have not yet the optimal solution but one of the possibilities is that we take a daily ticket so i will denote c1 the cost of ticket 1 for one day cost of ticket for seven days and cost of ticket for 30 days these three values are this this only 2 7 and 15 so if we take a daily ticket it will cost us c1 and then uh, total cost would be so we are just concerned about this part here onwards left side we have not solved so we took a daily ticket so it costed us c1 plus here onwards we already know so if this was a uh, day i this is day i plus one so it will be uh, optimal solution let's call it dp i plus one so this is one of the possibilities now other possibilities that we purchased a weekly ticket on this so what we will try we will try to include all the days within seven days from this let's say till here in this ticket itself and we cannot include these days since these are more than seven days from this current date so we include this many dates so the cost will be c7 plus dp uh, let's say this date is d7 so d7 is more than uh, d i that is current date plus 6 so we cannot include d7 and onwards and this is strictly increasing so we can include till here so this part we already have solution so dp d7 so this is another possibility and the third possibility you can think is we take a monthly ticket c30 so it costed us this much and we can include a few more days in this let's say till here so till here we included in this is within 30 day frame and just after this we have d30 d30 is one of the values from 1 to 365 so we cannot include this d30 or onwards so we already have solution for d30 so dp d30 so these are the three costs we have to pick minimum so pick minimum of these and this will be our dpi so now we have dpi similarly we will move here i minus 1 and again repeat the same thing and go on until we until we reach 0 and finally we return dp 0 so i hope it's clear so uh, what is the time complexity of this approach so let's say we have a few days so this is number of days given in this list and let's say this is n n number of travels are there n number of days so what we are doing we are starting from here and moving till left so this we make n iterations and for each what we are searching we are searching for this d7 and d30 two values so what is the maximum time d30 can take each of these days are unique and strictly increasing that is given to us so there will not be any duplicates so max that we need to go to the right is 30 times so this day is also within 30 days this day is also within 30 days so if we have all the possible consecutive days it will be 30 but if some days are missing it will be less than 30 and for searching for d7 we will at max make 7 comparisons so for each we can at max make 37 comparisons for each of the end days so it's 37 in so it's o of n time complexity 
and space we are storing the solution for each of these in the dp table so this is also of size n plus 1 or we can have n also we will have to adjust another condition so we are adding for this one also one hypothetical place after all the days are finished so that we can generalize it so for i we can use i plus 1 plus c1 so that's why we can have one additional value so space is also o of n now let's write the code for this approach in all the three languages it should be very simple if you understand this logic so this is the number of total number of days or you can use std array also since the size will not change so uh, we can initialize with some value some large value and then uh, we can only improve on top of that so one rough estimate would be that uh, we have 365 and costs zero so this would be one way so we have taken everything uh, we have taken a daily ticket for each day you can also have int max here or some very large value and the last one after every travel has been made we store zero to make our code more generic we can also ignore this for int i equal to n minus 1 i greater than equal to 0 minus minus i so let's initialize it with some value dp i plus 1 so we bought a so first option is to buy a daily ticket so this c1 so we bought a daily ticket on ith day and for dpi plus 1 whatever is the solution similarly we can buy a weekly ticket and cover all the days within 7 days and after that whatever was the optimal solution so this is the optimal solution and we are starting from here uh, so dpi plus 1 plus c1 c1 is costs 0 or let me write it before this So in this case, daily ticket was purchased and then we have to determine D7 after I, Ith day to the right. So we initialize it with this and D30, it's also initialized to I. So D7 is within current day that is i or, or rather days i plus 7. So we keep doing D7 plus plus and very similar we would search for D30 and dpi the optimal solution from ith to last day would be min of the current dp this one or we can even skip this part we can write here only this then costs d7 plus dp d7 so now it will look more even in this min comparison so buy a daily ticket then dpi plus 1 buy a weekly ticket dp d7 and costs uh, costs 0 sorry it's 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 length is 3 only so 0 denotes daily cost 1 denotes weekly cost 2 denotes 30 day cost and let's see we have to return dp0 
okay if, if we have more than two we will need to include it in this so it works for this case let's submit and the solution is accepted and we are around here 56 percent but if you try a few times i'm sure you will get right here you can get much better so now we will do it in java i don't think any change is required apart from some minor changes So this is everything is initialized to zero so we will not need this one and then and java solution is also accepted and it takes one millisecond finally we will do it in python 3 And the python solution is also accepted and here it performs bad you can try debugging why it's so much difference 